Well hello there ladies and gents, how the devil are you and welcome back once again to the garden garage. Finally the weather is nice enough that we can spend some time out in the fresh air. Before us today we have my mighty KTM 1090 adventure. Look at this thing. It looks like it is ready to take on the world. Especially with these super juicy Bridgestone Battleaxe AX41 Adventure Cross tyres. No sponsorship, paid for with my own money. Looking forward to getting these things dirty very soon. But anyway, as the locals say, Buddha Bidi Fisher, I've got a trip planned with this bike off road, plus a bit of adventure training. And for all of this, I think it's just too heavy. This bike needs to have a diet. Because as the bike stands, KTM tells us that this bike from the factory weighs 230 kilograms wet, five kilograms less than the R model because this doesn't have the engine bars as stock. On top of that, I have fitted a hip Kernbecker top box and rack, aluminium panniers and racks, Royster tank bag and ring, crash bars, bash plate, and LED lights. So that means that altogether I've added to this bike 34.12 kilograms of extras. That's quite a lot. That's giving us a total weight for this machine of 264.12 kilos. That's too much for me to be constantly picking this thing out of the dirt because I don't know what I'm doing and it's going to end up on its side. So what can we do about it? Well, a few things are going to have to be swapped, a few things are going to have to be taken off altogether, a few things might even have to be modified. And the first thing I can do, the easiest thing I can do, is to remove a few things because, let's be honest, for a week on the trails I don't really need all of this luggage. And to start with, I'm going to be spending a lot of time in this area of the bike, up on the bars, standing up, bobbling around, and I think the tank bag's just going to be in the way if I'm completely honest, so that's the first thing I'm going to lose. Okay, so that's the tank bag off, first kilogram saved. And the next sacrifice is going to be the top box. I don't want weight that high up on the bike, especially when I'm going to be on very uneasy ground, so this thing's coming off. Here we go, there's another five kilogram saved. But I'm not gonna stop there. What's the point in having a heavy rack when you're not gonna put any rugged, ruggage? That's ruggedized luggage, in case you were wondering. <laughs> yeah, what's the point in having a rack when you're not gonna put any luggage on it? So I'm gonna take this off too. Okay, so that leaves me with the original luggage rack to go on the back there. But again, I'm not planning to have a pillion on this trip and not planning to put any luggage on the back. So I'm gonna go a step further get rid of this altogether. So with a bunch of much shorter bolts, considerably shorter than the originals and therefore obviously much lighter, I'm going to hold down this rear panel and also give myself a handy ram ball camera mounting point. Lovely stuff. New camera mounting point, nice clean back end. And then for bits like this as I take them off the bike, rather than weighing every single thing individually, what I'm going to do is stick them into this here IKEA bag, the IKEA bag of weightlessness, and then I'll weigh that at the end of the video and find out just how much we've saved. So the next weight reduction is going to be both for the weight reduction factor but also suitability and that is the aluminium panniers because aluminium bins off-road not necessarily the most ideal because if the bike falls over and these things pin you on the floor you're going to end up with a broken leg. So the hard panniers are off but I'm going to leave the racks on but while I'm in the vicinity of the carriers this placeholder filler bolt really tight. This placeholder bolt here is doing nothing but literally filling a hole so that can be a couple of grams saved. Same there on the left side. And then continuing further on, I've already taken off the pillion grab rails because I'm not going to have a passenger at all on this trip. So might as well carry on, get rid of the pillion foot pegs. A little bit of a grey area here in Germany as to what you need to do when you take these off. Some people say foot pegs off, seat has to come off. Other people say when the seat comes off, the foot pegs have to come off, and then there's a third contingent that just say, nobody really cares, do what you want. So I'm going to do what I want in this case. I'm just going to enjoy a hefty weight saving. And there they go, into the IKEA bag of weightlessness. Begin moving further down into this area. The foot pegs have got these great big rubber chunks on top of them. I'm going to be off-road, things are going to be slippery, so 8 mil not off the bottom and those things pop off, giving me slightly more gnarly foot pegs, saving me a bit of weight and also giving me an extra centimetre and a half of legroom. And obviously exactly the same on the other side. So then into the IKEA bag. Down to the very rear end now and those tyres do look absolutely awesome. I love it. I'm not going to have a great deal of need to put the bike onto a paddock stand while I'm out on the trails. So, so on the left side. Yep. Feels like it already. Okay, so now things start to get a little bit more complicated. There's something else that I think is a little bit unnecessary. My bash plate has got its own bash plates, which, to be honest, 
I don't think I really need. I think I would prefer to have the ground clearance and I don't really care if this thing gets scratched. That's exactly what it's here for. So these things have to come off as well, but that means, unfortunately, this has to come off first. Lift one bolt on, giving me, hopefully, enough room. Pop off one of those slidey guard things. And the second one. All into the bag of weightlessness. It's not going to make a huge difference, but every little helps. And there's the bash plate on, a couple of grams lighter. Now the next victim of this Weight Watchers strip down is, I'm afraid, the LED lights. I'm sad to say I have not found them very good at all. And as such, I don't think that they're worth the weight they're adding to the bike with all of the wiring, with all of this aluminium protective stuff. So I'm afraid they have to come off. Disconnect them from the wiring loom. We'll get to that in a second. And we already know how much these weighed, and so I'm not going to put them in the bag. We're just going to stick them in with the panniers and add them in with the calculation at the end. Speaking of panniers, I've just remembered, as I'm going to be putting the soft bags on, I don't need these aluminium lock plates on here either, so that's another few grams we can spare. There we go. Well, these are a bit of an unknown in terms of the grand equation, so they can go into the bag of weightlessness. Okay, so with the lights disconnected, we've still got about 500 grams worth of wiring tucked away in there, and unfortunately the only way to get to that is I'm going to have to take all of the panels off. So bear with me, I'm going to get this bike naked. Look at that. Just as I take the panels off the bike, it starts to rain. Okay, so now I can start to take out some of the wiring. Hopefully I'm not going to need to take the tank off, but we shall soon see. Off with the switch. And then the wiring disappears backwards and forwards around this corner here, so I have to take some more paddleage off, unfortunately. Oh, that's, that's a heavy piece. We'll be having words in a second. Can't help think that some of this shrouding stuff around the radiator isn't really necessary, but unfortunately everything provides the mounting point for everything else. Like this bit holds the snorkels in, which is held on by this bit, which also provides the mounting points to hold the outside bit. Maybe with a bit of a complete redesign and an R&D budget and a half-decent workshop, we could really do something with this, but as it is, I have to put it all back on afterwards, unfortunately. And you know what? It's looking dangerously like I am actually going to have to take the tank off. I need to get into here, and this is all captivated by the tank. There we go, there's the tank off again. Third time since I've owned the bike. Oh, this time, only half full. Ooh. Snorkel out to start with. Now I can pull out all of this now useless LED light wiring, except of course for the bit that comes into the front here. And now it is properly starting to rain and the sky looks well grey, so I'm afraid we're going to have to have a relocation quickly into the badly lit garage. I'm sorry. So now we're moved into the garage. You can still see how that's the insides all exposed. Pull all of this gubbins out here. Hopefully that will now just pull through. Yep, there we go. That's that. Should hopefully now be able to just pull that through, and there we go. That's all the wiring for the headlights now off the bike. Once again, we already know how much they weigh, so we're not going to bother sticking them into the bag of weightlessness because we can just add that into the calculation at the end. Now that the lights are all taken out, before I put everything back together, I'm just going to have a quick look in here, and I'm already seeing a couple of things that I don't think are really at all necessary for this bike. For a start, this panel. What's this really even doing? This floppy thing held on with a cable tie at one end. It's lazy. I don't want it, I don't need it. I'm carrying weight for nothing. And that panel is now free, and I don't think the bike looks all that different because of it. And that's really the exact same procedure on the other side. And there you go, to the IKEA bag of weightlessness. I'm building up a chunk of weight already there. Hang on to the end to find out exactly how much. Let's have a look over this side. Can't really see anything else that looks like it needs to go, so we'll let the garage gels put it back together. Back over here on the right hand side, I'm seeing this floppy piece of rubbish here. Don't really see the point in it. I mean, I know why it's there, it's to try and stop all of the people who don't like getting warm air in their vagina while they're riding a motorbike when they've essentially got a boiling hot piece of metal between their legs. And I think, to be honest, this is like trying to soak up a flash flood with a roll of kitchen roll. It's just 
it's not going to do that much, is it? I think I would rather save the weight, so I don't want it. I'm getting rid of it. Clips out the bottom. There's a bit more weight saved. And another piece into the bag of weightlessness. Still in this area, there's another piece here which is offending my sensibilities. This bit here, I don't understand what purpose this piece actually has. I mean, I get that it's guarding the cable loom, but I'm not really sure what from. All that is here is a petrol tank. There's nowhere it can go. It's sandwiched between the airbox, the frame. There's lots of other places with a couple of cable ties that could be held tight, so I think that's got to come out. What I need to do now, to give it the same level of support that it had before, is stick a hefty cable tie around that bunch, another one around that bunch, and a slightly smaller one around this bit in the middle. And there we go. Everything is firmly in place. Nothing's touching anything, nothing's flapping anywhere. So we don't have this and the two screws holding it in anymore. And of course that finds its way into the bag of weightlessness. Otherwise, as far as I can see, there's nothing else that I really need to worry about. No optimizations to be had. So first of all, I'm gonna get the garage gels to put all of this back together. Now I've stopped the garage gels at this point because obviously there's a very strong argument for the fact that you could actually leave the bike as it is now with all of this bodywork not on. Right through the hills to your heart's content and save the weight of all of these relatively heavy plastic panels. In fact, if you haven't seen it, there's a great video by Murtur Gio where he takes a Yamaha T7 and completely strips it like this, but more extreme even. There's even some angle grinding involved with something crazy like, I think they said 60 pounds worth of weight missing off of the bike. I'm not gonna achieve quite that, but we're getting close. But anyway, I'm gonna put the body panels back on because, you know, I want it to look at least half decent. In fact, for those of you at all interested, I actually weighed the panels that aren't yet on the bike and there's nearly two kilos to be saved just in those five panels. Okay, with the front end all put back together again, I'm back here at the back end because I've decided I want to have a look behind this panel. And also, first of all, I want to take the wiring out for the passenger heated seat because once again, no passenger on this trip. That of course goes into the bag. Now that naturally also means I've got a big hole in the top of my panel. Not idea if it's going to get wet because there are electrics behind here. So I'm going to get a piece of vinyl or something to stick over the top of that. Take out the last screw here and already see this bracket is obviously meant for several different models of bike that have several different components involved because something should probably attach there. Something should probably attach there. There must be a separate ECU or something, but for my tastes, there's too much bracketry there just to hold this little fuse connection. So I think it's time to get the mod on. All I really need are these two connector tabs here. The rest of it can all get stuffed. That steel bracket is now well, about a quarter of the size it once was. The rest of it goes in the bag. File off the sharp edges, make everything black again. This presentation is everything. No, it wasn't a stock part. Took that fusey connection thing back onto the bracket. That is plenty sturdy enough. It's not going anywhere. And a bunch of space freed up here for, I don't know, smuggling gummy bears or whatever you're into. Okay, so that's that side back together. And a quick look inside on the left here. Reveals no bracketry, just this weird rubbery cable tie thing which was holding nothing, so that can go in the bag. And by Jove, I think I might have found another one. This bracket thing here has a bunch of clips. It's a massive great big tray. Two out of the three clips are completely empty. One of them's utterly pointless, but it's got big plastic hooks going all the way around the frame. I think that can come out. Well, it's broken now. And there we go, a now broken tray that was essentially doing nothing. There was something cable tied to that and one of these was busy. The rest of them, everything was empty. And for that, we had four cable ties. And so that and all the bits that came with it go in the bag of weightlessness. That's really coming together. Speaking of coming together. One hefty cable tie around this big connector block that to the wiring up above which is super stiff which means that that can't go anywhere and it's absolutely in exactly the same place it was before and then a smaller one around this little connector 
Okay, so with that all taken care of and looking nice and tidy, everything on the two sides taken care of, I can come to the next bit, which is a bit of a... Ooh. All the mosquitoes are out, which is really just a bit of housekeeping. Because this battery cover looks like an absolute piece of shit. One of the clips is bust, the hinge is knackered here. So I thought, I'm just going to get rid of it, save the weight. Why have it there if I don't need it? Unclip this diagnostic plug thing, and there we go. That's another thing for the bag of weightlessness. That actually highlights the fact that I've been cheating a bit, because I've already stepped ahead to the next step. A good way to save a big chunk of weight on a motorbike nowadays is to bung in a lithium battery, so I did just that last week. This one cost me 90 euros, great deal at Lois. Normally this is about 130 euros, but they had a special offer so I couldn't say no. And all it was, I just whipped out the UASA one, boshed this one in, it's got a nice little level tester on the top, and the bike works great so far. And best thing of all, so far, I've not noticed any loss in voltage between startups, whereas normally with the UASA one, it's always a couple, maybe even half a volt lower than the last time I started, so that is good stuff. Although, now that the battery cover is gone and there's actually nothing holding the battery in place, although to be fair, it is pretty solid, what I've done, and what I'm going to do, is I've stuck some of these foam spacers that you get in the box with this battery in the kit onto the thing. I'm going to ditch the rubber battery holder because this battery weighs nothing, there's not so much worry about it sliding around, and I've poked some holes into the battery tray sides so I can just run a cable tie over the top hold everything steady and that foam pad is taking care of the vibrations instead of that and of course the rubber battery tray goes in the bag and for the last of the freebie weight savings just by taking stuff that's already there off you can, depending on how you feel about the rules and the laws and the environment in your area you can remove the evap canister and the pipe work that comes with it. I had a bit of a camera glitch while I was uh, doing it, so it's already out. There's plenty of videos on the internet for you to see how to do this. Um, obviously, I will be putting mine straight back in after this theoretical exercise, but for now, it goes in the bag. As well as other bits that I've taken off the bike that haven't been calculated into this equation, which are the original factory luggage pannier hanger racks and the original plastic bash plate. So they go in there too. Right then, well now we've moved on to the mods that are costing money, probably the quickest and easiest way to save a bunch of weight on your motorbike, and sadly probably the most expensive, but let's be honest, possibly the most satisfying, is to change the end cam for something a bit smaller, and by association, probably something a little bit louder. And on this bike, as with most, it's particularly easy, because you just undo the hanger there, undo the clamp, and then the thing pops up. Oh, Jesus, it is heavy. Oh. I don't take my word for it, because I've got the luggage scales here. And we have got 6.62 kilos. Which I'm going to be replacing with this, the Cobra Exhaust RX77. I'll be honest, I've actually already had this on the bike for a while, and it sounds absolutely brilliant. Hang it on the scales, and we're looking at 2.685 kilos. Fitting the new one is obviously just the reverse of taking off the old one. And bosh, we've saved four kilos off the bike, just like that. For a pipe like this, that would cost you between three and 500 quid. Kindly provided to me by Cobra Exhaust. Thanks very much to you guys for that. But yeah, that's how easy it is to save a few kilos on your bike and make it sound awesome. Next on my list is a bit of a strange one. Maybe unexpected, I don't know. But in my sights are the handguards. They're a bit floppy. I mean, they might stop a bit of something. They're also not particularly heavy, to be honest. But I don't like the way that they're so massive. They've got clamps on the insides of the bars. I would quite like to be able to move my levers a bit further that way so that I've got stronger leverage, less need to, to pull hard on the bars, a bit more control when I'm off-road. I'll be honest, it's a tip that I saw watching the Adam Riemann channel. Really good stuff if you're starting to get into the world of ADV. You get some really, really good tutorial videos, really good hints and tips. But yeah, so these handguards have got to come off. And in their place, I'm going to put the old trusty SW Motec ones that I got given for the CB1000R about two years ago. Now they get to come to the fore again because they're fully open on one end, so there's no need for that clamp over there. They'll free me up to move the levers inboard. And they've also actually got an aluminium skeleton, which means they're probably a bit more sturdy and probably able to deal with a couple more knocks than these ones are. There you go, that's off. And this one goes on, but not before. An extra little trick. I'm actually going to take this set of super old 
bar-end aluminium mirrors that I had on the FZ1 many, many moons ago. Let's see if I can actually fit handguards and bar-end mirrors at the same time. Looking good so far because although these handguards are actually slightly heavier than the original handguards, I'm hoping that the saving from the mirrors will cancel all of that out, plus less turbulence from these mirrors on my helmet. All counts on the winds table as far as I'm concerned. And the best bit is these handguards have even got a little recess there, almost like they were made for bar end mirrors. And there we go. Handguards fitted with bar end mirrors, which when on the motorway I can leave like this. When things get a bit off road, I can twist them in so if the bike ends up on its side, the mirrors won't end up on the floor. Maybe the silver doesn't completely match with the bike, but to be honest, I don't really care. If I'd like the effect that much, maybe I'll paint these black in the future. But what we all want to know is, am I winning in terms of weight when I take off the stock mirrors and check them against these ones? 717 grams. So that means in total, the stock mirrors and the stock handguards come to 1.297 kilos and the SW Motec handguards and the aluminium mirrors come to 1.368 kilos. So that actually means that this new setup gives me a loss of 71 grams. To be honest, for the sake of what I'm going to gain from it, I'm going to stick with this. The garage elves can do the other side and then we'll carry on. Right, well, the next paid for weight reduction is going to be these massive indicators. They're big, they're clunky, they're old. I want rid of them. I want rid of these filament light bulbs that are prone to fail when they start juddering around the place on some gravel roads. So they need to come off. Cut the cable off because I'm never going to use these again. Definitely going to use that again to connect the LED indicators in a second. Okay, so there's one stock indicator off with its ugly filament orange bulb in there. In its place, I'm going to put this tiny, tiny little Kellerman Atto, kindly provided to me by Kellerman. I had them fitted onto the Honda CB1000R, and now they're going to be fitted onto the KTM 1090. But of course, because they're so tiny, they've only got an M5 thread, and this hole is much bigger. So thankfully, I've got a set of these adapters, so I can bung this little adapter in. That then gives me the perfect size hole for me to fit the indicators into. I've just accidentally realised that this little cubby hole here has a lock! When you click it over it can't open! I didn't even know that. So now I've got a plug that I cut off of the stock indicator. 0.3 grams saved. Heat shrink over the crimp. Right then, well. Dead batteries and the fact that it was past midnight stopped play there, but I managed to finish putting in this indicator. Same again on the other side. And the beauty of this fix was, as you saw, all I did was connect the wires up and then the indicators on this bike are ECU controlled. So there's no need for resistors, there's no need for an extra fresh fresher, there's no need for an extra flasher relay. And if I just hit the button, indicator is indicating. And I think they look pretty good. Way, way smaller than the originals. I have to get something to plug these holes with just to stop loads of water getting in there, but yeah, happy with them. And while I was at it, I also did these ones on the back here. These aren't Kellerman indicators, these are Lois' own brand ones, cost me 20 euros each, but they are plenty bright enough. With the indicators out of the way, the only thing left is the screen, which again is a bit of a cheat. Originally I had the original tall screen on. This is the MRA sports screen, which I bought myself once again. The only reason I didn't do the whole switcheroony thing to show you was because I couldn't find the bolts for the original screen, so I've just left this one on and factor the numbers into the calculation at the end. But before we get to the calculation, I'm sure that some of you are shouting out, Andy, how are you going to go touring? You've taken all your luggage off. Well, that's where we come to these beauties over here. You'd have seen these in the whole Hepco & Becker luggage and equipment fitting video. But these are the Hepco & Becker X Travel Basic Bags, which fit through the use of an adapter plate to these luggage racks. Bag then, with these little tabbies, hooks into the rack. These straps hook in like that. Hook in the G-clips and then tighten it down. That bag is now fitted and nice and solid on the bike. There we go, that's me soft luggaged up and ready for some off-roading action. And between these two bags, I'm getting 60 litres of storage, which, let's be honest, is more than anybody needs. And 
because of that I'm really not going to be missing the tank bag or the top box because on this trip it's all about minimal. But yeah, now that everything is fitted or swapped or removed and I've got this big bag of nonsense that I've taken off of the bike, it's time for a bit of a calculation to see just how much weight we've really saved. And while we're working through it, have a guess. How much do you think is in this bag? How much lead have we saved from the machine? Because if we're starting with the stock weight of this bike, 230 kilos. If you remember how I had to fit it up before, we were coming in at 264 before I put anything in the boxes. First up, we saved 3.935 kilos with the exhaust pipe. Swapping the screen has saved me 235 grams here under the seat. Swapping out the battery gave us a monstrous 2.769 kilo saving. Changing the mirrors and the handguards sadly lost us 71 grams. I don't think we're going to cry about that. And then these tiny indicators on the front saved me 116 grams. And then the angular counterparts at the back saved me 115 grams. And everything else is in this bag of bits. So, the moment of truth, let's go and find out just how much this bag of bits weighs. I don't really want to hold it out in front of me like this for too long, I'll tell you that much. Wow. Just wow. Who would have thought it? I've taken off 4.98 kilograms of random, useless, unneeded stuff off of this bike, which was already one of the lightest, big adventure bikes of his time. But enough of that, full calculation time. So this bike, stock, 230 kilos. If it was still stock, but with all of the things taken off that I've taken off and stuck in this bag, the bike would weigh 217.921 kilos wet, which I find absolutely astonishing because that's actually about 10 kilos lighter than a stock Yamaha T7. But of course that's not how I'm going to be riding this bike around, so with the stock bike lightened as I have it here, plus the luggage racks and the bags, the weight comes in at 225.486 kilos wet. But of course once I've then added the crash bars, the bash plate, the Scott Euler, a couple of other bits and bobs, the total, complete, ready to go wet weight of my bike is 234.486 kilos. Pretty incredible that I've got a bike ready to hit the twisties, ready to head on an adventure. And it's coming in at only five kilograms heavier than the stock bike rolled off the factory floor. Especially considering when I just whacked everything on Willy and Indy Nilly, I was coming in at 260 kilos. That's getting towards the sort of weight of a tour ready GS, isn't it? Interesting fact, actually, the power to weight ratio of the KTM 1090 is almost exactly the same as the current model 1250 GS. What do you think about that? Anyway, that is all of the mods done, all of the things taken off. The bike is ready to hit the twisties, and I've got a bit of dirty action coming up for this beastie. Tomorrow, for a bit of ADV training. Somebody's gonna show me how I'm supposed to actually ride this thing in the bendies, in the dirt. And then, three days after that, this fine machine is heading up to Norway and I'm gonna be popping my Tet Cherry and taking in six days of the Trans-European Trail in Norway. But of course, in closing, that's not really everything that I could have done. Like I mentioned in the middle of the video, I could have taken all these panels off and left them off. Another potential is you could even swap all of these panels out for carbon fibre versions, and you'd probably be able to save about half of the weight of them. That is an expensive way to go. And these panels are also this really floppy, bendy, flexible plastic. So they're pretty good at taking knocks, I hope. Another thing you could do is run through the whole bike and change all of the nuts and bolts in every single available position for titanium. That will save you 20, maybe 30 grams. Probably cost you about 40 grand in the process. If money's no object, that is a good way to save some weight. You could switch the wheels out. I've got the stock wheels. I did also want to fit the Raid Garage Rally front end to this bike. It eliminates a lot of this stuff, replaces the panels with carbon fibre, gives a complete built-in screen that loses all the adjustment stuff and has LED headlights. That was about 600 euros and once I wrote to them and asked if they wanted to be featured in this video they declined to reply so that didn't happen maybe someday in the future. Could also probably save a little bit of weight by swapping out the heated seat. This is the heated ergo seat which means it's thicker and it's got the heated stuff in it probably a bit heavier than stock but I love having that heated seat. I don't know how I've survived without it. I could have swapped out the pillion seat for one that doesn't have the heated element, for one that's a bit thinner and lighter, but unfortunately I'm not made of money, so sticking with this for now, just have to make do with having lost the wiring. At the very extreme end, you could probably also change out the entire exhaust system for a full titanium system, and that would save you another shed load of weight, but for me, that's way too much money, far more than I want to be spending on this bike right now, and because 
catalytic converter often gets removed and there's full systems, wouldn't actually be legal on the German roads anymore and that would be a problem for me. But yeah, otherwise, I've done everything that I could, made the bike a lot lighter, I'm happy with the work and yeah, really looking forward to seeing how heavy it is to pick it up out of the dirt, I think. It's obviously going to happen. Hopefully I've made things a bit easier for myself. Thank you very much for watching me do it. I hope it wasn't too nerve-wracking for you as I was pulling the bits off of this bike that I've literally only just bought. But hey, you've got to make it the bike that you want to ride, haven't you? So, with all of that done, keep yours shiny or dirty, however you want to do it. I'm going to go and get this one very mucky. And uh, yeah, the next time you see this bike, it's going to be blasting through some dirty, dirty bends. And hopefully with me on the back with a grin on my face and not being chucked off into a ditch. Until then, keep yourself out of trouble and I'll see you in the next one. ta -ra!